This is a lecture about artists that were in Hawaii, European artists, artists that, uh, not native Hawaiian artists, excuse me, but artists that, that came here uh, through European. It's from European contact, which is when the Europeans first started coming to the islands in the mid 20th century. So the very, the, you may ask why would artists come to Hawaii? And the answer is they were the official artists on expedition ships. And uh, starting in the 17, early 1700s, Europeans sent out expedition ships all over the world, um, but they started coming to the Pacific Islands in the early 1700s. This is a painting uh, of the expedition ship Beagle. Now, it has nothing to do with Hawaii, but it's the one that Darwin was on. So why would they have an artist on an expedition ship? And the answer is they didn't have a photographer because photography hadn't been invented. So the artist was there to record not only the birds, the animals, the plants, but the people. And all that was recorded and was taken back to the European country that launched the expedition. Usually these expeditions lasted two to three years because it took that long to go from, say, England or France and tour essentially all the way around the world. So artists came to this area, to the Hawaiian Islands originally this way. Next, please. And the very first uh, European artist to paint in Hawaii was a man named John Weber. Weber and he, he was here in 1778 and 1779. Next, please. Weber was uh, an, an Englishman. He was the son of a sculptor, and he sailed on the third voyage of Captain Cook. Uh, it's the ill-fated voyage, uh, meaning that Captain Cook was killed on that voyage. And he was the official artist and illustrator for the third voyage of Cap Captain Cook. Next, please. Cook was here in January 1778, and he named it the Sandwich Islands. So for over 100 years, uh, this would this area was called the Sandwich Islands. And that was in honor of, of the, one of his patrons, the people that sponsored the expedition, which was John Montague, the Earl of Sandwich. Next. On February 14, 1779, Cook um, got involved in a skirmish and um, was killed by the native Hawaiians. Weber did an engraving, the death of Cap Captain Cook, which became fantastically famous. And it was reproduced many, many times, and he became a very famous artist. And this is the, the engraving. Engraving was a way to produce an image in, in mass numbers. And engraving is, is, in essence, scratched onto a copper plate, and then the ink is poured into it, wiped clean, and then the paper is printed. So you can print large numbers off one plate before it gets flattened out too much and then generally they rework the plate or they make another plate. Uh, this was copied by other artists. Uh, it was a big event, the death of Captain Cook and Weber essentially get a, got his reputation from this one image. Next please. While he was here, Weber also did a lot of these topographical views, which is what they called him. And they were views of what the area looked like because people in England, in this case, uh, wanted to see what it looked like, wanted to see what the villages looked like, what the boats looked like, what the people wore, what the people ate, all those things. Those were all recorded. And this is a village on the Kona coast. Next, please. Uh, this is one in Kauai. And it was published as a view of uh, Atui Sandwich Islands, 1778. And another one yet from his uh, series on the exploration of Hawaii by Captain Cook. Next, please. The next artist is a um, French artist, Louis Chory, uh, and he was here in 1816. Uh, he too came as as an um, artist illustrator. Next, please, Linda. Um, he signed up on the Rurik. Um, which came across the, uh, around the Horn and went into the, the Pacific, actually went to California 
and painted in California and also stopped in, in Hawaii. Uh, he was uh, in Hawaii in 1816. Uh, when he returned, he published uh, his, his findings and his images. Uh, he kept on exploring and um, on March 22nd, he was in 1828, he was murdered uh, near Veracruz on another expedition. Next, please. This is one of his California natives. These are the way the California Indians are in Southern California. They do not look like the noble red men of the plains. They did not have horses. They did not hunt buffalo. Uh, they were rather peaceful. Um, they lived off the land. They didn't even need agriculture. So he did a whole series of, of these mission Indians. By the time he got there, they were missionized. And then went on to Hawaii and did these magnificent views of, of Hawaiian, Hawaiian rituals. Uh, Shori uh, did a large series of these plates. They're, they are in French, but this is the man's dance. Um, we, we see um, other artists that painted it. Next, please. And then this is the favored wife of Kamehameha the I. So Kahumanu, uh, painted in 1816. I hope that wasn't an artist. Macario. <laughs> Next, please. <laughs> and this is the interior of, of one of the chief's house. So they did have houses. Um, this is an important person. Uh, lots of people in his household. It's a big house. Um, there's windows. There's a fire. Uh, this is, as I say, if you didn't have a photographer, so you had to have somebody draw this and paint it and then later get it published. Next, please. The next person to come to Hawaii on the European expedition was Jacques-Étienne Victor Arago. Um, all of you know I'm French, right? It's Jean. Jean, you know, I'm the woman, Jean. So I can say all these things. But he came here in Hawaii in 1819 on, on a, another expeditionary ship. Next, please. And his ship was called the Urani, or Uranus. He, he joined Louis de Fresinet's expedition, sailed around the world, stopped in Hawaii in 1819, and also when he returned, he published his, his uh, book on travels. So these are works by Arago, another view of the, the men's dance uh, in Hawaii, Oahu, 1819. Next, please. And then one of the officers of Kamehameha II. Kamehameha I was the um, Hawaiian chief that united all the islands. And he started a dynasty. And there are several Kamehamehas. But Kamehameha I is the George Washington, the great hero of, of Hawaiian unity. So in 1819, Kamehameha II ruled from 1819 to 1824. Next, please. And then there's this wonderful painting of a baptism um, aboard the Urani in 1819. It was a, an honor, honorific thing to do, to baptize the baby of a high official. And everybody got dressed in their you know, parade best and uh, their important people got on the boat and they did the ceremony. The next artist is Robert Dampier. This is a British artist. And he painted in Hawaii in 1825. That's a self-portrait of the artist. Next, please. Uh, he was a, an artist and later became a clergyman. In 1819, he moved to Rio de Janeiro, Brazil, and worked there. And in 1825, the HMS Blonde, a British ship that was returning the bodies of Kamehameha II and his queen to Hawaii, because they had both died of measles when they were in England. They stopped to pick him up on the way to Hawaii because they needed an expedition artist. And he came to Hawaii, he spent 11 weeks in Hawaii and did numerous important scenes of, of uh, island life. He was one of the first to paint the volcano. We're gonna see a lot of paintings of the volcanoes because it became kind of a Hawaiian national uh, art style to paint the volcanoes because they were very very popular with the visitors and they sold very well so there were a lot of artists 
that would begin paint, painting the volcanoes and continue to paint the volcanoes up into the 1920s. Next, please. While he was here, he also did the next king, since he was bringing back the parents of Kamehameha III, who ruled a quite a long time, 1825 to 1854. So this is the boy, the son, who suddenly became king because his parents died of measles when they were visiting England. The uh, Hawaiian royalty were very fond of visiting England. There was a close tie between British royalty and Hawaiian royalty. Um, the British were the ones who really settled and colonized Hawaii and they named it Sandwich Islands, but they did continue to have the king and have all, all their officials, but they, they associated a lot with the royal family in England. So there are numerous voyages back and forth between the kings of Hawaii all the way into the 20th century. Next, please. And he also did other uh, dignitaries and people um, in Hawaii. This is a Hawaiian woman, 1825. Next, please. This is the artist Titian Peel. He was the son of Charles Wilson Peel, who was a very well-known American painter. He had several sons, and he named them all after artists. There's Rubens Peel and Rembrandt Peel and uh, Titian Peel. So I guess you were stuck. You were going to be an artist. But Papa had a, a museum in Philadelphia, a natural history museum. And young Titian worked there for a while and became a, 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 an avid naturalist. So uh, when he had the chance to join an expedition, next please, uh, he did. He joined the expedition, expedition aboard the Peacock, which was an American exploration vessel from, for four years, from 1838 to 1842. And it went throughout the South Pacific and stopped in Hawaii in 1842. Next, please. And lo and behold, he painted the volcanoes too. So um, this is Kilauea by day. But he did something very interesting that had never been done before. He did it at night. And it became the most popular way to paint the volcanoes was at night. So we're going to see a lot of volcanoes at night. And people loved these paintings. Visitors um, would, would buy them and take them back. We were, uh, Linda and I were staying with a friend who, who lives in Oahu. He has a collection of these uh, historic Hawaiian paintings. And he had one of uh, a volcano at night. And it came out of, of uh, Stuttgart, Germany. So it ended up all the way in Germany. And, and now it's back in Hawaii. Next, please. The next artist is James Gay Sawkins. And he was in Hawaii from 1850 to 1852. So we still have people that are visiting. Next, please. And he was an English-born artist, but grew up in Maryland, lived in Cuba, and then came to Hawaii, 1850, and stayed for a couple of years. Now, he painted right here in Lahaina. And um, he did some wonderful paintings, which I will show you. And then he returned to England and uh, had a li nice uh, long life there. Next, please. Um, this is uh, Sawkins. It's Hilo which is on Oahu, Hilo from the Bay in 1852. And this is a painting. Oh, sorry. I'm a tourist. You guys know I'm a tourist. I'm sorry. Big Island. Next, please. Here we go. This is Honolulu. Um, this is not by him, but it's a copy of one of his paintings. It got, it got destroyed, but this, there existed a copy. This is when you should have bought that, that lot there in Waikiki. <laughs> Sorry you missed it. Next, please. And then here we are in Lahaina. So this is right here. It's probably right out front of the hotel. If you look to the left, you'll see that cleft in the hills. And uh, it's, it's Lahaina. Can I pop? Oh, I got some artists here that are arguing with me that it's Kanapali. That's here in Lahaina. Next, please. <laughs> OK, is this Kahanapali? No, this is Lahaina. Anyway, the Presbyterian Church, which I don't think exists anymore. Would somebody like to comment on that? I don't think so. But one of the most inter interesting things that Sawkins painted while he was in Hawaii was, next, surfing. 
So you notice the women are surfing too. Next, please. Uh, the next artist, Enoch Wood, Wood Perry, was the son of, a, of an American artist. He came to Hawaii in 1864 to visit his cousin, Daniel Dole, uh, of the family that would eventually have the Dole fam pineapple, uh, who had been here at missionaries. He traveled to many of the islands, and he did posthumous portraits. Uh, Kamehameha the Force, the fourth had, had died a year before he got here, but he did a portrait of Kamehameha the fourth. And then he did one of Albert Kamehameha, would, who would have been Kamehameha the fifth, but he died a couple years even earlier. Um, next, please. So this is uh, Enoch Wood Perry, again, of Waikiki, a diamond head from Waikiki. Again, you should have bought that lot, but never mind. Next, please. And then here one, here's one right here in Maui, uh, the Rose Ranch. So we're getting more and more professional artists. These are not explorers anymore. By this time, by the 1860s, these are professional artists that are coming to Hawaii. They've been trained, trained in Europe, and, and they paint these magnificent paintings. Many of these paintings can be seen at the Honolulu Museum. Uh, so if you get a chance to visit, go there. They have a wonderful collection. Next, please. And then this is the uh, posthumous portrait of the young prince who, who died. It would have been Kamehameha the fifth. Next, please. Uh, Joseph Strong um, lived in Honolulu as a child and moved to California. He was a painter in San Francisco where he met and befriended another artist that we're going to sh see in a minute named Jules, Jules Tavernier. Um, Strong married the daughter of Robert Louis Stevenson's wife and ended up traveling with them. They lived in Samoa for a couple of years. Then they moved to Hawaii. And while he was in Hawaii, he was commissioned by John Spreckles uh, to paint some of the scenes of the island. He did return to San Francisco in 1895 and died there. Um, I can only show you one painting, and it's a magnificent painting. Um, it's the Japanese laborer on the sugar plantation of Spreckelsville. But we're dealing with, you know, large, important paintings that are being produced by these artists. Next, please. The man that Strong was painting with in San Francisco was Jules Tavernier, who actually was um, son of an English artist born in Paris. He was here from 1884 to 1889. Next. Tavernier is, is one of the um, really colorful artists of the period because he liked to party. And in San Francisco, he and Strong uh, partied and partied. They had notoriously big parties. He ran up a huge bill and he had to leave San Francisco to escape his creditors. This was Tavernier. And he came to Hawaii because Strong had come to Hawaii. So he said, you know, maybe I should come to Hawaii too. And he did. And he got fascinated by the volcanoes. And he's the first artist to really paint the volcanoes as, as a major subject. And he's considered the founder of the Hawaiian Volcano School. That's the name of the, the group of artists that painted the volcano. Uh, he ran up huge debts in Hawaii but they wouldn't allow him to leave unless he paid his debts. And he never did. He died in Honolulu in 1889. One of his students we're going to see later was a, an artist named David Howard Hitchcock. So this is Jules Tavernier. And of course, he's the founder of the Volcano School. And he loved to paint these at night. They're very dramatic. And they're, they're you know, fa fascinating paintings. Next. This is Kilauea at night with the moon in the distance. This is a daylight scene. It's a very beautiful small painting that's at the Honolulu Museum. Sunrise over Diamond Head, 1888. Really lovely little painting. Next, please. And more. 
Tavernier is, is, is noted as one of the important painters of, of California. He was one of the founders of, of the Bohemian Club in San Francisco and has a great reputation in um, California other than a party giver. He's also wonderful paintings. Next, please. And look at this little thing. Linda and I were in uh, Honolulu looking at a collector's uh, and it, they took us to a, a dealer and on the wall was this beautiful little painting of the Maui sugar plant in 1885. And that's what it looked like when it was first built. And I asked the guy, do you mind if I take a picture so I can use it in a lecture? He said, no, go right ahead. So the, the wonders of, of using your phone to take a picture and the next day it's in a lecture in, in, uh, in uh, Kauai. Hawaii. Next, please. This is David Hitchcock. Now, he was the first one of these artists that was born in Hawaii. And uh, he was the, um, a friend of Tavernier. Next, please. And he was the grandson of missionaries. And he met Tavernier when Hitchcock was painting a watercolor of the volcanoes. And Tavernier was very impressed by young Hitchcock's paintings and advised him to go to Paris <clears throat> and to study there, which he did. And he returned and lived his entire life in Hawaii. But he, he became the most famous artist of Hawaii in his day. This is in the teens up to, he died in 1943. But most of his important work is in the teens, 20s, and early 30s. And uh, as an older man, he had witnessed the attack. He was in Pearl Harbor when the Japanese attacked and he died in Honolulu in 1943. This is one of his early paintings of the volcanoes. This is when he was painting with Tavernier. They look a lot like Tavernier. In fact, he, he, he had said in his, in his writings that uh, Tavernier would start a painting and then abandon it and, and tell Hitchcock to finish it. And he would sign it. He would sign it Tavernier. So um, he knew how, to, how Tavernier liked to paint. Next, please. But he also did these gorgeous views of Hawaiian life. Um, the canoes, the houses, mornings, the really wonderful paintings. Next, please. Royal Palm, Moana Lua. These are all uh, Hitchcock. Next, please. Forgive me if I don't start pronouncing some of these names. Paleuna from Waine, 1909. So you see, he's a very accomplished artist. He's, he's come back from study in Europe, and he, he knows how to paint. Next, please. This is Honolulu Harbor, 1920. Next, please. And then this gorgeous, beautiful, large painting. This is 1925. Do we have another? Oh, Kailua Bay from Lani Kai. Next. And then one of his later paintings, you can see they're getting different. They're getting more structured, more outlined. So Hitchcock, the first one to actually been born in Hawaii. Then Lionel Walden, um, born in Connecticut. Uh, he went to Paris, learned how to paint, uh, returned to the United States, first visited Hawaii in 1911, and returned many times. And he died in France. He was a uh, well known in France, he had exhibited uh, for several years in the French Salon. He was made a, a Chevalier of the Legion of Honor. So um, very good painter, very well known artist and, and did a lot of his work in, in Hawaii. Next please. Here's a waterfalls in Oahu. 1916. But his favorite views were of the ocean and in moonlight. He, he loved to paint the ocean, especially at night. He loved to paint from the back of a ship. I'm going to show you a couple of those wake 
of the ship type paintings. Uh, Moonlight 1920, Night Fisherman. This is a small painting. Next, please. And this is a large one. This is the wake of a ship. Next, please. This is one of his most famous paintings, Torchlight Fisherman, Waikiki, 1920, reproduced in a lot of books. The, the uh, torch attracts the fish, and the fisherman spears the fish. Simple, right? Next, please. And Theodore Wars, Theodore Wars was a San Francisco painter. Um, he painted in Hawaii in 1901 and came back again in, in 1913. Next, please. He was um, a world traveler. Uh, his base was in San Francisco. He was a member of the Bohemian Club, but he painted in Japan. Uh, he was there for three years and then returned again. He came to Hawaii and then went on to Samoa. Uh, he actually survived the San Francisco earthquake, but the fire that followed destroyed everything he owned. He came to Hawaii in 1913, was here for a couple of years, and then went on to Taos, and he died in San Francisco. Next, please. Uh, this was painted in 1901 on his first trip, uh, Hawaiian house. And then perhaps his most famous painting is this one, which is in the Honolulu Museum, The Laymaker, uh, 1901. It's a beautiful painting. Do go, it's on display. If you go to Honolulu, go to the museum. It's closed on Mondays. And then his beautiful little sketch. It looks like the kind of work our artists do. Next, please. Um, Arman Manukian uh, was uh, born in Istanbul. It was then called Constantinople. Uh, he painted in Hawaii from 1927 to actually 1931. That's a mistake, I'm sorry. He died in 1931. So next, please. Um, he was, he was um, Armenian and he left Turkey to es escape persecution. Uh, he went to art school in, in New York. Then he joined the Marine Corps uh, for four years and got stationed in Hawaii and he loved Hawaii. He stayed on afterwards. He was an artist for the Honolulu Star Bulletin um, from 1927 till he died. He died in 31. The date's wrong. In 1929, Helene Fagan, the wife of the, wife of the Anna Ranch founder, purchased seven paintings for their ranch on Molokai. Um, those paintings, many of those ended up at the Hana Maui Hotel. And they were there from 1947 to 2010. They became very famous. They were in a dining room. And then the hotel was uh, sold and the paintings were sold. Um, Manukian committed suicide in 1931 in Honolulu. Uh, he had fallen in love with a married woman and it, he just decided he couldn't live and um, he drank some film developing fluid and died. It's hard to be an artist. <laughs> Next, please. These are some of the sketches he did. Uh, a very good painter. Um, did uh, a lot of military subjects because he was in the Marines. But what he's best known for are these gorgeous uh, Hawaiian paintings. Um, this is a small painting, uh, early Hawaiian explorers, but he is, he is in fact an art deco painter. He's not an impressionist. Right now, we, up to now, we've seen a lot of impressionists and a lot of realist painter. But an art deco um, changes, he, he, the artist changes the way they work to create a more interesting, a more dazzling, um, uses colors to bold in eff bolder effects, uses line, a very active line, lots of detail, and the artist wants to dazzle your eye with detail, color, line, and all sorts of beautiful things. Next, please. This is one of his famous paintings, one from the hotel uh, in Hana, um, Men in an Outrigger Canoe, 1925. Uh, 
a painting of Honolulu, 1928. So they're not real direct paintings. Um, the artist takes a lot of liberties, but creates a really um, dazzling, a very effective image. Next, please. Another famous painting that also from the hotel, Red Sails, 1928. And then this one. Uh, when we did, uh, when we were visiting our, the collector friends in uh, Lanakai, um, turns out he has this in his living room. The young guy on, on the right is me. <laughs> so it was, a, it was a very interesting trip and uh, John Dilks, he and his wife Patty own, own the paintings and they also have the one of Red Sails which I showed earlier. Uh, they took us all over to see collectors and um, the museums and it was a wonderful event. Next please. Eugene Savage uh, was a muralist, and um, next please, he, he was actually teaching um, painting. He worked for the WPA, he did a lot of murals, and he was also an Art Deco painter. And in 1935, he was in Florida, uh, focusing on the Seminole Indians and how they dealt with the intrusion of tourism. Uh, his, you know, the, the, the destruction of the Garden of Eden. So he had this, um, this preoccupation in his mind to paint these things. And this is one of his uh, Florida paintings. And it shows a Seminole mother and baby in ceremonial traditional garb, regalia, and surrounded by the tourist industry and, and how their life is being changed and the Garden of Eden uh, it becomes a Garden of Eden for the tourists, but it is no longer a Garden of Eden for the original settlers. Uh, and there's another one of these from that Florida series. I assume the crocodile is modern civilization, but um, he had a very specific point of view about this. But this is the Art Deco style. A lot of stylized form, a lot of detail, a, a lot of, of brilliant colors. Um, in 1938, he was commissioned by the Matson Navigation Company in Oakland uh, to paint murals on the Hawaiian theme. And they were going to use them on their cruise ships, the, the Lurleen, the Matsonia. And for two years he worked on a series of four foot by eight foot murals, which were completed late in, eight, in 1940. And there were plans to put them on board the Lurleen and the Matsonia, but war broke out with the bombing of Pearl Harbor and all the cruise ships were converted to troop ships. And they remained that way during the war. At the end of the war, um, the cruise ships were reinstated, but the company decided to use the murals for their menu covers. And they're very famous murals um, because they reproduced a lot in the menus Everybody who took those ships uh, after the war um, brought home the, mur the menu covers. This is there a series of four I'm going to show you. This is one of them. And they were finished in 1940. Uh, here's another one. Again, this is Art Deco. Um, lots of bright colors. To, it's meant to dazzle your eye with, with interesting color and, and exotic subject matter. Next, please. Now we've all seen these, and if you don't think you've ever seen one, I'm wearing a shirt that has them. So, uh, and these murals were in storage for years, but then about four years ago, they were installed at the Honolulu Museum. I'm sorry, two years ago. But see how big they are, they're quite sizable. <laughs> 